Mexi ladies and gentlemen, before you is a game called Connection The Nightmare Within and was inspired by classics such as Resident Evil, Silent Hill and Alone in the Dark, but also The Evil Within. Game is out today on Steam, the developers Dragon Level, a three brother team who was kind enough to provide me with early access and a review key. So. Thank you kindly for that. I asked for this review key because I simply played the demo on Steam. I just had to play more of it. And boy, was I not disappointed. A true in every sense of the word survival horror experience that lets you play over the shoulder or fixed camera. The choice is yours. So buckle in as I go all fanboy and gush over everything that I loved about this game and some critiques reserved towards the end of the video. Spooky forest? Check. Flashlight? Check. Great use of fixed camera angles that make you feel even more hatred towards Capcom for abandoning this once best aspect of survival horror games? Double check. Connection The Nightmare Within is clearly inspired by the classics that came out before it, but this experience is far more than a pretty imitation. There is a difference between copying someone else's work and truly understanding what made that work so great in the first place. And I can happily confirm that these developers not only understand but built on top of it further. Let's look at how they use fixed camera in this game to illustrate my first point. We all know what fixed camera is. As you move your 3D character from point A to point B, the view you have of the game changes depending on where you are. You have no control over what you see and this happens automatically as you move about. Keep in mind you can switch to the over the shoulder style of play at any time, but my review will focus on the fixed camera experience as for me, that was clearly the superior experience. Now Resident Evil had static fixed camera, so the camera never moved. Silent Hill had a more dynamic approach, launching after Resident Evil, where you had fixed camera usage, but sometimes it moved with the player or tracked you on screen. This game does both and does an amazing job of it. Many times the camera did not move and in return provided such a cinematic flair and also doing a consistently good job of not letting you know what is around the corner. Other times the camera would follow me but just for a moment and from different perspectives. The goal each time was clearly what would look best and the trio brothers did a great job with their judgments. Every once in a while I would literally stop moving just to appreciate the angle the developers chose and think to myself, well played lads. Nice work of art. This early scene is a great example of this. Initially, you're at a fair distance as you run towards the camera. Flashlight, fog and depth of field all work in their magic simultaneously. What was visually very striking was on my way back, I am attacked by the first monster in the game and I have to run away because I can't defend myself yet, I don't have any weapons. As I run away, the monster was in focus as I could be seen in the distance slowly disappearing and I thought it was just a thing of beauty. A very clever calculation that the developers figured by the time I reached the other side, the monster should appear on the camera and it felt like I was in a movie. I'll move on from gushing over fixed camera angles, but this one simple example just did such a great job. Game looks great over the shoulder as well, for those of you who do prefer that style. But let's now talk about gameplay for a bit and the moment I realised these developers are actually very smart. Now a slight spoiler ahead but it's just a tiny one I promise and illustrates a very important point. So there comes a moment where a killer cyborg ninja with a massive machete suddenly appears. Still defenseless, I run for my life as it chased me, right? The camera perspective changing as I run and it was just beautiful and terrifying all at the same time. 
Once I left the area, I was safe, but every time I returned, he would randomly greet me. Think of Mr. X or Nemesis from the Resident Evil series. Eventually, I got a gun and took a couple shots at Mr. Killer Cyborg Ninja. It, it didn't look too impressed. I, <laughs> I don't think he cared if I shot him or not. So I turned around and I ran away again. Eventually, I got stuck in the game and I didn't know what to do. By chance, I was cornered by the killer yet again, and in pure frustration, I decided I would just waste my bullets on it. To my surprise, it dropped to its knees. Thankfully, I didn't waste precious ammo in a survival horror game. I cautiously approached, as it could have been faking it, and it turned out I was able to steal its massive machetes, the massive knife. This massive knife was now mine to own both as a weapon going forth and as an item I can use to help progress further. I wanted to highlight this moment especially since it illustrates some very clever design, rewarding the character for eventually taking a chance and attacking the cyborg, rewarding that bravery and having a fun way to give you a melee weapon instead of you just finding it on the floor somewhere. Also, the body does not vanish or anything. You slowly walk away with the gut feeling this likely will not be the last time you meet this friend of yours. I gave it a few good whacks with my new machete, just to make certain before moving on. Let's talk more about controls and combat itself, as it's extremely well polished. So, you have your tank controls, that work as expected, and you have a quick turnaround button. You aim your weapon, you shoot, and you reload. You also have a roll button, letting you jump out of reach if anyone sneaks up on you. A very welcome feature, and I'm sure traditional survival horror fans can relate, is sometimes you're not 100% sure if you are actually aiming at the enemy or not. Leading you to sometimes waste precious ammo, but the developers of Dragon Level have a simple yet effective solution to this problem. When aiming your weapon, if a monster or monsters, there are plenty, if your aim of sight lines up with them, a white cursor thing will wrap around them, letting you know it's now safe to fire and who is going to get it. Now, let me paint a picture and I'll have the footage to back it up. All of these controls come together for an actual thrilling combat and I love it. So I'm fighting a boss-like creature who is strong enough to throw entire tables at you. While running away, I perfectly timed my roll, followed by immediately hitting the rotate button to face the enemy, aimed my weapon and took a shot. This all happened in a moment, but came together perfectly. No fighting with the controls, struggling to line up my shot and maybe missing anyway. Nope. Run, roll, rotate, aim, fire. Yet another brilliant example of these devs knowing exactly what they are doing. Going from taking inspiration from traditional survival horror games of old, to building up and even improving on these very systems. You can move while reloading, but they draw the line at firing where you have to be still. Next up, let's talk about a special grab system that is in place. Ladies and gentlemen, seems we are at the halfway point of the video, so my usual quick reminder that if you feel video games are about escapism and not activism, please, please subscribe right now as you're watching to help empower voices such as my own that just want video games to be games, no more, no less. And if you want to support me further, I do now have channel memberships where you can get a cool badge beside your name and custom emoji like these. Anyways, thanks for hearing me out. And now back to Connection, The Nightmare Within, Let's discuss those hugs I mentioned earlier. So hugs, what am I talking about? Well, enemies can grab you and this triggers an interesting quick time event. A circle appears and if you stop the point at a certain point, you manage to pull the enemy off you. If you get the perfect point, you one hit kill them by cracking their head in and if you miss, the damage keeps going on and the cycle repeats. This is an interesting choice for the developers because frankly, I dislike quick time events. I think they're annoying to the point where I disable them normally if possible. 
In this rare instance, I think it works well in the middle of a struggle and multiple enemies attacking. The last thing you want to do is calm yourself down for a quick time event, but it does a good job with amping the pressure up as you try to calm your nerves knowing it's going to pop up and you will be punished if you fail too many times. It also feels really satisfying when you crack that head open, turning an annoying moment into one of triumph where you even saved ammo. Enemy corpses stay on the ground as well, which is a nice touch to remind you where you have been and the triumph of taking them all out. The collapsing animation as you finish enemies off is satisfying and accompanied by a satisfying pop sound when the head explodes. The soundtrack is rather excellent and I never found it annoying. Each step, shot, reload and interaction is greeted with the expected sounds and of high quality. Weapon variety are your usual partners, you get your handgun, you get your shotgun, you get your melee weapons, you get more advanced uh, weapons and even like a grenade launcher and so forth. You have your traditional limited inventory space, a shared inventory box to help you store items, and even mixing herbs together to better heal yourself or all here. Of course, they are not herbs, but I'm sure you understand the reference, right down to even combining two different colored items to fool a different item that lets you fully heal. Puzzles are very present in this game and I'm of two minds on this one and depending on what you like will depend on if you like this next part. You pretty much have two types of puzzles. You have small ones that you figure out pretty quickly with a hint very close by to point you in the right direction and slow things down a bit. These puzzles are pretty welcome as they were not painful to deal with and didn't take much time. Then you had the other puzzles and these ones I did not enjoy as much. Some puzzles really had you thinking things over and banging your head against the wall. Try not to overthink things to figure out what the developers had in mind. This meant your progression was halted until you figured out what to do. Personally, I'm the type of survival horror fan who tolerates puzzles instead of actively looks forward to them. If you like puzzles and wish they challenged you a bit more, this game is for you, thankfully. There is a redeeming point here, and that is on the Steam page, the developers have been kind enough to actually have a free guide that you can use at any time, and you bet your smexy butt, I found myself going back to that guide a good number of times. It was smart for the developers to include this, letting those who enjoy harder puzzles to do their thing, and those like me, who unless it is glowing right in front of them, will probably miss very obvious clues, could use this guide so we don't get too frustrated, so the best of both worlds right there. Story is very interesting, and the name of this game gives a bit of a hint. You may have thought that Connection, The Nightmare Within, sounds a lot like The Evil Within, and you would be right. In The Evil Within, by the way, quick self-plug, did a 2024 review not too long ago if you're interested, feel free to check that out. In that game, you dive into the mind of a killer, and anything is possible. Well, in connection, the game starts with you diving into the minds of another killer as you explore what is going on there. I found the story as a whole interesting from what I have played so far. I seem to be about three quarters through the game at this point, maybe even closer to the end to be frank, I think I'm around the corner from being it. You get your usual, you know, learn what's going on by reading notes or listen to pre-recorded messages. You also get some cutscenes here and there. I like the foundations that have been laid down, and I look forward to see where the story pans out in the end. Let me sum this up my dear viewers, this game is much more polished than you would expect from a 3 man team. If I was told 10 people worked on this, I would have believed it. The graphics are very good, the fixed camera angles work like a dream with great angles, and a camera system that will also move in real time. Combat is very smooth. Not so smooth that it feels like an action game, but not so clanky that if you die, you feel like it's the game's fault. I was on edge the whole time, wondering what is around the corner, but actual confrontations were a thrill. If I died and messed up, it was because I panicked. The game is filled with very smart design, 
Frankly speaking, it felt like the developers were more experienced than they actually are, considering this is their first game. As of the time of this recording, I don't actually know how much this game will cost. Steam isn't giving me a price, but by the time you see this, a price will be there and whatever it is, I hope it's reasonable and, and does not deter you from an excellent and traditional survival horror experience that builds on the foundations while keeping the roots firmly in place. Congratulations to the team on your launch. Feel free to reach out to me in future if you have any future projects or if you plan on making an official sequel for this game. I will happily want to cover that after viewing your demonstrated ability with this current game. I think you guys did an excellent job. Thanks for liking, subscribing or becoming a member. Truly appreciate my smexy fellow gamers. Thank you for hanging out with me. I'll see you all next time. God bless and have a great day. Alright, bye bye.